All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, for another live chat on Lancaster Online with Millersville University meteorologist Eric Hurst. Uh, we're obviously talking about the uh, approaching possible major March storm here, and uh, we have uh, snow totals this winter, Eric. I just wanted to go over how many, how much snow we've had so far. Yeah, well, the official snow total uh, winter season to date is just 8.8 .8 inches. So we had a few of these little events. You add them off, you get 8.8. .8. Um, we're probably going to double or triple that total over the next 24 hours. So this storm is pretty, looking pretty impressive. Uh, we also have a little cold stretch looking here. Uh, what is that? How is that setting this storm up? Yeah, well, you know, um, we, we commented off air that, you know, uh, February was the warmest on record here in Lancaster. Um, and it kind of lulled us into thinking maybe winter's over. And, you know, Mother Nature has a way of uh, evening things out in the long run. And she's doing so uh, in classic fashion here with this current cold stretch. And then the, the nor'easter that's coming our way. Uh, temperatures the last three days have averaged more than 15 degrees below normal. So that sets the stage. You know, we were down in the teens this morning in terms of our low temperature. So there's plenty of cold air ahead of this storm. That's something we really haven't had this winter ahead of storms. And consequently, we've had a lot more rain than snow. Now, this is more of a classic front-loaded storm with plentiful cold air to our north and northeast. And then, of course, we have a couple of jet stream disturbances coming at us from the west and from the south. They're going to combine, and uh, you know, on Tuesday we're going to have a major nor'easter along the east coast. Now, how those ingredients all come together—that's always kind of the tricky business. And these storms, um, especially when you know this this uh, type of setup where you have actually two separate disturbances that'll be uh, phasing along the east coast, these storms are notorious for having some tricks, you know, and some twists and turns and some unforeseen things happening and. Um, and so that's why I'm a little cautious on my snowfall totals um, is knowing that past history tells us sometimes uh, things don't quite come together perfectly for us. So we can talk more about that if you like. Right. Right. So let's, let's get a little bit into the timing of this storm. What are we looking at in terms of when this is going to start? Right. Well, no concerns this afternoon. Clouds will be increasing this afternoon. Uh, I think light snow will spread in from the south. Uh, between 7 and 10 p.m. If you're down near the Mason-Dixon line, you could see first flakes around 7 or 8. If you're in the northern part of the county, it may be 9 or 10 p.m. This storm is going to ramp up quickly, however. I think by midnight or 2 a.m., it's going to be snowing probably at an inch an hour already. Uh, and then, you know, the worst of this storm is midnight to noon. Uh, so that 12-hour window is when the bulk of the snow will fall. And during that time frame, it could be falling at an inch an hour. There could, be, there could be a few hours around daybreak where it's falling at two inches an hour. So you start adding that up and you can see where we're headed. I see. So what are we also looking at in terms of accumulations? It sounds like it's going to rack up rather quickly there in, in the hourly accumulations. That's right. Um, well, you know, I think 10 to 18 inches is a good wide range uh, that uh, covers uh, Lancaster County. Uh, but I think there's going to, you know, there's going to be some big differences, um, more to the north and west and less to the south and east. And here's one thing uh, that um, I don't hear many people talking about, but I think it's a factor with the storm is a changeover to sleet. I think if you're in Philadelphia, you're definitely going to see a few hours of sleet uh, at the height of the storm. And even in like parts of Lancaster County, I'm thinking, better chance south and east, like towards Quarryville or over towards Gap, uh, I think there's going to be some sleet mixing in during the height of the storm. Uh, Lancaster City, it's possible there's sleet, but maybe not. I think as you head up north and west towards Harrisburg, uh, probably not on the sleet. Well, sleet has an effect of, of course, holding down accumulations because, you know, you're losing snow to sleet. Um, and also it helps, uh, you know, uh, hold things down so maybe a little less drifting in places that see a lot of sleet. Um, and so that's one of the wild cards with this storm that, you know, we just kind of have to wait and see, um, you know, where that ends up. If you look at the map I, I've drawn, I have a yellow line, which is kind of where I think the high water mark is for the sleet changeover occurring. Um, and even in places that mix over to sleet, they'll go back uh, to snow. 
Um, so, uh, again, places towards Philly where there's a lot of sleet, you're probably looking at just 6 to 12 inches of snow. Um, the farther south and east, the more sleet, the less uh, snow total, obviously. As you head north and west um, into the mountains uh, around Harrisburg, north of Harrisburg, uh, north of Lancaster, that's where you have the best chance of getting, say, 20 inches. Um, I think like a place like Schuylkill County or Perry County, um, Blue Mountain, uh, heading up towards the Poconos. Those, I think, are the big winners with this storm. Okay, and before we got on air, air here, we were talking a little bit about your uh, snow maps and the accumulations that you're mapping. You said you're going to be coming out with a new one, so that that indicates to me that there's still maybe some moving parts here. Well, yeah, hey, hey, there's going to be moving parts right up, you know, until the storm's done. You know, that's just the way these nor'easters are. They're very dynamic storms, and um, you know, uh, there's uh, no no two storms are the same when it uh, when it comes to an event like this. So uh, though we like to look at past history, we, ask, we have to keep it also an open mind to what things can do uh, one extreme to the other. And so again, that sleet is a real factor for places south and east. Um, north and west, the mountains play a role in enhancing the snowfall. And that's why I have that purple stripe on my map uh, with the highest snowfall amounts being right near the turnpike, uh, Blue Mountain, up, like I said, Schuylkill County, um, up towards uh, Hazleton, let's say, and over into the Poconos. That's where I have that 16 to 24 inch range. And, uh, you know, I think for most of Lancaster County, I think 10 to 18 is, is a pretty good range. So right. we'll see. Yeah. So, so we we've kind of dodged a bit in terms of snow impact, impact this winter. So I'm sure the kids are a little disappointed in how many days they've had off or how many two hour delays. Do you think we could start looking for snow uh, uh, school closures tonight or, or is that going to be something to keep an eye out for tomorrow? Well, um, you know, I don't make that call, of course, but I, I, I do talk to a lot of the superintendents and those guys are really good. They, they look at all the information and, and make the, the best call. And probably many of those places will just find it to be an easy decision to make this evening, um, assuming, you know, we don't make any big changes in our forecast. Uh, I think the bigger question is Wednesday. Um, the storm will be long gone by Wednesday, but there's going to be a lot of wind behind this storm. I think Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night into Wednesday, there'll be uh, blowing and drifting. Uh, so the uh, more rural areas uh, where there's 10 to 20 mile per hour winds out of the north and northwest uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday will continue to see drifting and that'll slow the cleanup uh, in those areas, in the, the more exposed areas that are prone to drifting. Um, so that's kind of the second part of the storm. You know, part one is the snow event that might also mix with some sleet in places. Um, and that really plays out pretty quickly. Um, the, like I said, I think the, the heaviest snow is midnight to noon Tuesday, and then it kind of tapers off uh, Tuesday afternoon, and there'll just be some lingering snow showers Tuesday night into Wednesday. But the drifting Tuesday night into Wednesday is, is a more important second part to the storm. So, Right, and, and as you were saying, the sleet there is also going to play an impact in the drifting. The heavier the snow, the more difficult it becomes for those winds to move that snow. Is that right? Right. Places to the south and the east that have, say, several hours of sleet um, would, you know, have less, uh, you know, less of an issue, I guess, with the drifting. Although even places that mix with sleet, I think they'll go back to snow. So you might end up with snow, then sleet, and then snow. And so there's going to be some something to blow around, I think. Uh, but places that get all snow, if you get, you know, uh, 10 to 18 inches of all snow, no sleet at all. Well, then that's a lot of snow to blow around with those winds that are going to continue right into the day on Wednesday. And, and so that's why it's it's possible the kids get two days. We'll see. Hey, you said it first. I think that they're going to be pretty excited about that. But it, we could also talk a little bit about people limbering up because they, they haven't been able to shovel this, this winter yet. And now they're going to have this huge snow that they might have to move potentially. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Get the uh, heating pads out and everything like that. So. Yeah, and it's going to be cold. I mean, uh, for, for March, I mean, let's not forget um, normal high temperature this week, we should be in the low 50s. Now we've had a lot of warm weather in recent weeks and kind of got used to it, but now it's kind of a reality check and we're back uh, temperatures while it's snowing tonight in the 20s, tomorrow only in, in the low 30s. Uh, wind chills will make it feel like teens and 20s. I mean, so this is a good old fashioned snowstorm the type of thing we more often see in February than in March, 
Um, but, you know, this year, I guess we just kind of got things switched. We had the warm February, and now we have the, the cold and snowy March. And dare I say, there's even a, a chance for a little more snow as we get out to Friday night or Saturday. So this cold weather and this kind of stormy pattern is going to linger for another seven days. Um, so whatever snow we get, we'll stick around a little while. Right. How about the travel impact tomorrow? I know you're always in close contact with PennDOT and, and working with them. Uh, what are we looking at for roads, road conditions? They're already out working on them, uh, maybe like train or, or even airport. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I imagine all the major airports in the region will be closed. Um, and uh, I'm not sure about the train situation, to be honest. But, you know, PennDOT, they'll be fully staffed. They have a lot of supplies. They're raring to go. Um, and, uh, you know, now I should add when it's snowing at an inch or two an hour, uh, you know, nobody can keep up with that. So you got to cut the PennDOT guys a break, uh, in terms of, you know, they're out there full force, but if it's snowing at two inches an hour, you just can't keep up with it. And what that means is, you know, everybody just needs to stay home tomorrow, uh, and enjoy the storm, go out and shovel in, uh, in, um, in spells, you know, kind of break up your work so you don't, uh, hurt yourself and uh, enjoy the snowstorm. Right, now this is a rarity here in March, and I think the last time this, this sort of storm shaped up was in March of 93, is that correct? Well, March of 93, that's the benchmark for the classic nor'easter. That was a monster storm uh, that came out of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this storm's not quite that potent uh, as the March 93. Um, you know, that, that storm produced bona fide blizzard conditions here in Lancaster, whereas this one, the wind, uh, the winds won't be high enough to make for a bona fide blizzard in Lancaster, though it, they may be uh, farther, you know, up into, into parts of New York or New England. Um, but, you know, March snowstorms happen. We get a good six to 12 inch snowstorm about uh, every six years in March. In fact, we just had one a few years ago. So they're not all that uncommon, but um, getting a storm over a foot, say between 12 and 18 or 10 and 18, that is much more rare. We've only have, had uh, four of those uh, storms in 90 years here in Lancaster. This one could make five. Okay, and now last thing I wanted to go over here, just a little bit of the forecast looking ahead. Now you mentioned Friday and another chance for snow. What are we looking at in terms of how long this might stick around with temperatures and then more snow? Right, right. Well, first of all, um, you know, the, the storm I mentioned, uh, the threat for Friday night and Saturday does not look like another nor'easter. It looks more like just a front going through that could give a few hours of some snow or wintry mix. Um, but still, it's something to keep an eye out on. Uh, in terms of temperatures, I think we're going to remain below normal for the next week, uh, at least. And, and therefore, um, the snow, while it will be compacting day, day uh day after day um it's not just going to go away overnight that is for sure in fact when you get fresh snow cover on the ground that will help uh, solidify or help uh, sustain the arctic air later this week i wouldn't be surprised if some uh night late this week maybe wednesday night maybe thursday night maybe friday night uh, we could get down into the single digits for low temperatures that's something we have not done all winter long so uh, it's possible we could have our coldest night of the winter here um, in the final days of winter. So, you know, spring arrives just one week from now, officially. It doesn't seem like it with this forecast, Eric. I got to be honest with you, but we're, we're actually paying for all the warm weather now, as we talked about. So It all evens out in the long run. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, thanks again, Eric, for joining us today for another live chat. Obviously, we'll, we'll be sticking with this situation as it progresses and as the snow actually starts to fall tonight and into tomorrow. You guys can follow Eric on Twitter at MUWeather for updates. Uh, he, he's very active on there. And, of course, you can stick with Lancaster Online and LNP for, for our updates as well. Thanks for joining us. Again, it's Miller, Millersville University meteorologist Eric Hurst. Thanks. Yep, you're welcome.